Hey yo, what's up guys, John Boogle here, and we are back. Finally, it is time for the very massive key gotchas in depth. Here we go. Now, since this is probably going to be a pretty big video, I'm going to add this disclaimer here. Keep in mind, this is a guide. It's not something you should strictly follow to a one-to-one -one ratio. Everyone's account is different. Everyone has different units and everyone is in different situations. With a massive new wave of players coming in, I've seen a lot of people misusing guides. So I just wanted to make that very clear. Take the info that you need and use it to your advantage. Whether that be one thing, two things, or this entire video. Just take whatever you feel is important to your account and use it. And as always, I recommend not only strictly following one guide, but search for multiple guides and take apart all the info that you need from each of the guides. That is the best way to use guides, whether that be just searching up other guides or gathering info from the community and other platforms. Whatever it may be, just grab what you need and put it together to get your ultimate info. I also have a Discord as well, so if you want to join that and maybe ask for help down there, there's plenty of people that would want to help you down there if you just ask. So yeah, that will be linked in the description. But without further ado, let's begin because this is going to be a pretty long video. Now as for the format of this video goes, I'm sure I'm going to put timestamps and chapters throughout this video so you could jump to certain points if you do need to. But the way we're going to go here, first of all, we're going to go through the rare cats and then the super rare cats. And then we're going to dive into a couple more topics involving the key gotchas and going into each of the key gotchas in depth and maybe explaining some different situational gotchas as well. Now, first, before we hop into each key unit in depth, I'm just going to pop up a quick little list I made here. Pow! Okay, there we go. Let's talk about this for a bit, then we'll go into each of the key gacha units in depth. So, of course, the ones at the top are the key gacha units, the key of the key. The ones that I recommend getting immediately if you don't have already. Right below that is the ones that I recommend getting after you've already got all of the ones at the top. Because stuff like Cyborg isn't really needed at true form, because Paris works fine at just second form. And the true form doesn't really make that big of a difference compared to like Cameraman where Cameraman goes from or Murkat goes from completely useless to one of the best rare cats in the game. Paris has just kind of always been good even without true form. Thaumaturge is there just for that extra crowd control or enemy counters. Thaumaturge is a fairly universal debuffer but I recommend getting it second to Sanzo. In the situation category this is basically units that you might need later down the line or right now, it really depends on where you are at in the game. If you're in early game, maybe you might not need these cats quite yet, unless you're really struggling in into the future, then I recommend getting Psycho Cat. But other than that, you probably won't need them unless you're like moving into mid game where you're gonna encounter zombies and more aliens. And E Duelist is just kind of there just in case you don't have Courier. The get later category, pretty self explanatory. These are units you shouldn't really be focusing on as a first priority. I would recommend them as a second or third priority. Really, if you want to counter a certain niche, like Chill Cat can work in some cases, and Pirate Cat is a good anti-red crowd control unit, Necro can work as support for Sanzo, and Pogo's true form is just kind of there in case you want an extra meat shield. But other than that, everything else is just low priority or niche. Sometimes you might need to get these units, sometimes you might not. Really depends on where you are at, what you are facing, and what you'll eventually need. But the key gotchas are the ones in the top half. Those are the ones I recommend going for absolutely wherever you are at the game. So let's focus on them. Let's get the most important ones out the way first, and then we'll slowly move into the others. So first of all, of course, we have Cameraman or Murkat's true form. This is very self-explanatory. Cameraman is a must. The amount of value you get out of Cameraman is comparable to almost none, because this is truly one of the best rare cats in the game, if not the best rare cat in the game. Cameraman is extremely efficient as a 
spammable AoE attacker, and it also, on top of that, has very great survivability as well, with some real nice talents on top of that. It can work as an anti-floating unit in some cases, but really it can be worked as a generalist AoE attacker, which is a little shorter range than something like Cyborg or Paris, but offers a lot more with its low cost and survivability. Next up for the key gotchas is none other than Ramen, aka Artist Cat's True Form. Now what Ramen provides is a good counter to a nice niche, which is a very tanky staller or meat shield against angel enemies, but it's also just a general meat shield because it's just naturally high with its stats, with its health, and even its DPS that the low cost Yes, it might have a bit higher recharge, but it is worth what the stats Ramen gets. Just like Cameraman as well, Ramen can pretty much be slapped into any lineup. And that is a very, very valuable trait. Especially if you're in the beginner phase, where you're not too much focusing on niche, but just starting to focus on true forms. This will definitely boost the power of your lineup. Next up, we got the ultimate crowd control unit, the early game and mid game killer. It is Sanzo, AKA Bishop or Monk Cat's true form. Now this one is pretty self explanatory as well. There's a reason it is one of the key gacha units. It's because it just completely demolishes pretty much all of the floating enemies thrown at you in early and mid game. And even later on when you unlock the talents, that target angel talent, it could be a great counter to a lot of the pesky angel peons. And it is just an overall fantastic crowd control unit. It has low cost, it is very spammable, so you can stack them up very easily and quickly as well. It has a good range as well. It's not too low to where it's getting outranged by a huge portion of the enemy units. It has a very decent standing range for such a spammable AoE crowd control unit. And yes, it is an AoE crowd control unit. Just a ridiculous crowd control unit, absolutely a must. The next key gacha we have in the rare cat section is none other than Catasaurus, aka Jurassic Sitter's true form. This is also fairly self explanatory. While there is an argument to be made where this could be a niche, I do recommend getting this as a key gacha unit because there isn't much units like this in its niche. And that niche is of course an anti-metal unit aka a critter. A metal killer basically. This unit will be your best friend through all of early game and mid game against every single metal enemy basically. With its talents, it could go toe to toe with the metal killer himself, Paladin. And it's arguably way better because it's spammable, well decently spammable. I wouldn't say it's Sanzo level spammable, but it is way more spammable than Paladin. Plus, with those crit talents, there is just a very high chance for those crits once you start sending multiple of them out. Combined with its solid stats as well, you'll just be killing metal enemies left and right. Now there are some situations where it might get hard replaced with units like Waitress or Craze Monaco, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this is still one of the best critters in the game. Next up we got Cyborg, aka Paris Cat's True Form. Now this is where I would say it's still a key gacha unit that I would go for the true form eventually, but it's not as much needed as the ones mentioned before because Paris is still good even without true form. There's no real groundbreaking change from going to Paris Cat to then Cyborg Cat. It's just really a buff to stats. But that buff is still very helpful because that small little true form buff that Cyborg does get is powerful for such a powerful gacha unit. And even if you don't get the true form, it is still a key gacha unit to have because it has great range, it is very stackable, it does have a 
decent chunk of cost, but that makes up for its great DPS that's stackable with its great range. It's basically Cameraman, but with more range, lower recharge, a little bit lower DPS than Cameraman, but once again, it has more range, a higher unit cost at 900, but more stackability. You can quickly realize how Cameraman is just such a better unit compared to Cyborg because it just offers so much more and it's so much more efficient as well. The only thing is that range is very situational. Sometimes Cameraman can get screwed over in some stages, that's when you'll need to bring out Cyborg. Nonetheless, Cyborg slash Paris is still a key gacha unit. Next up we got is Thaumaturge, aka on Myoji's true form slash Magicka Cat's true form. Now this is fairly straightforward, Thaumaturge is a universal debuffer. What that means is it targets everything. So yeah, as you can tell, that is helpful in plenty of stages. So without a doubt, it's already a key gacha unit, being so useful in so many stages, providing great support with the units like Sanzo. You can pair it with units like Sanzo in a lot of stages, or just pair it with your ranged attackers in stuff like Craze Cat or Manic Macho, for example. It has solid range, and it will be able to debuff most of the pesky peons that come in your way. It's also worth noting that it does have wave immune talent, which can help in some cases. But other than that, it's really just an all-around debuffer for early game and mid game. Now those are pretty much the key of the key rare gacha units, but like I mentioned before, there is situations where you might need some other rares that might help more than what you have right now. And I'll just quickly list them here. If you're struggling with Into the Future or having a hard time against alien enemies, getting Catalyte and Neo Psycho Cat is probably a must. Catalyte works as a great high health meat shield against alien enemies while also dishing out some solid damage on the side as well. Neo Psycho is an alien Sanzo in a way but without area attack and much of the other benefits Sanzo provides, but it's still a very great counter or crowd control unit for alien enemies. Now there also is like E-Duelist and Chill Cat, but especially for E-Duelist, just get Courier Cat at this point because it is just hard power crept by Courier Cat. So E-Duelist is really not that high priority at all, unless you cannot get Courier Cat. So that is really on you, but Chill Cat is a different story. Chill Cat, it can be used as a general AoE attacker at some points, but it does have very low health and its niche is alien, which is also covered by another unit we'll cover later in the video. But if you don't have, let's say, Castaway or Seafarer, then Chill Cat could be a great investment, but it is not something I would call a key gacha unit. Same thing with units like Pirate Cat and Necromancer. These are not really key gacha units, but if you are struggling with these traits, especially the red trait, then I do recommend getting Pirate Cat. While floating is basically covered by Sanzo, Necromancer can be extra support with Sanzo, so that is something to keep in mind. And lastly, for the main situational rare cats, we have Shingon, aka Wushu Cat's true form. This is pretty much the ultimate anti-zombie meat shield, but once again, it is a niche. If you're really struggling with the zombie enemies, then I only recommend getting it then. This is not something you should really focus on first. Once you get the main key gachas, then you can start focusing on these. Because these are really true forms that you won't need in a hurry. And once again, this is targeted towards beginners, but if you're in the mid game and such, maybe you are going to start working on these units. And that pretty much wraps it up for the rare cat section. And here's once again, a quick pop up of all the key gachas for the rare cats. Now let's hop into the super rare cats, the best part. On the rare cat side, there aren't as many impactful units as on the super rare cat side. I mean, yes, there's cameraman, there's ramen over there, but the super rares have some really 
really impactful units. And these units will become the core of all of your progression throughout the entire game. And just like with the rare cats here, I'm gonna just quickly throw up a screenshot of the super rare cats true form priority. Bam, there it is, the true form priority list. And once again, there are some things here that might vary depending on where you are at, but the top is the same wherever you are at. The key gotchas is of course the ones at the top, later at the bottom is stuff that gets really optional or just really niche, and towards the real bottom is stuff that I don't really recommend investing in unless you want to for collection purposes or maybe you've already gotten everything else here already true form. But yeah, with that being said, let's move on into the super rare key gotchas in depth. Cyberpunk. Very, very important unit here. Cyberpunk is a very utility type of unit. It's not meant for its DPS or its stackability or anything like that. It's purely meant for its utility. And that utility is probably one of the most helpful in the game. Because the amount of stages that you can just throw in Cyberpunk and just Cyberpunk the stage away is tremendous. This unit is often looked down upon because it's so broken. It just feels like you're playing with cheats on. But with that being said, of course, Cyberpunk is a crowd control unit with extremely long range. And the thing that makes Cyberpunk so broken is it sits at so long range that it sits at a safe distance most of the time. And because of that, it can just sit there and constantly crowd control whatever is in its path. And yes, it is universal. It targets all traits except metal, but other than metal, it targets everything and it is a 100% chance to slow. No RNG involved, it is 100% chance. And it is area attack on top of that. Now you can try to dig holes into Cyberpunk's kit. You can say its HP is way too low, it doesn't provide that great DPS output at all. It has very long recharge, but that's just not enough to take away from its absolutely broken utility. In the beginner phase, in the mid game, in the end game, everywhere this unit is going to be used and abused because it will just wipe all of your problems away because it will constantly be helping. Now there may be some stages here and there where Cyberpunk doesn't work, but compared to the stages where Cyberpunk completely destroys in, it is just not even worth mentioning the stages he doesn't work in, because he just helps everywhere else so much more. So what if he doesn't help in like three more stages? But yeah, Cyberpunk, absolutely a key gotcha unit. It will destroy everything in the beginner phase, in the mid game phase, even in end game, because it is just too powerful with its utility. Speaking of absolutely broken units, next up we have none other than Can Can. Now, Can Can is right next to Cyberpunk, and you can even argue it's above Cyberpunk in that broken unit status. Compared to Cyberpunk, though, Can Can is a fairly simple unit. It just has godly stats a quick recharge for such high stats, and it also on top of that is just a all-around unit that could pretty much be smacked in any lineup. The best way I can describe Can Can is that it is a unit that is pretty much a miniature version of a Bahamut, but with quick recharge, and it also has some niche ability to slow or crowd control red enemies. And aliens, with talents. Speaking of talents, it also provides some of the best talents, that being bounty talent, so it provides huge amounts of cash boosts, so you'll never run low on cash with Can Can out. Also, you get that nice speed talent, which allows Can Can to just blitz through and pass all its troubles. The only downside to Can Can is that its range is not too high, but its godly stats make up for that because it's usually just used as a massive peon killer, and maybe if the boss has a very long attack animation or something like that, 
Can Can is able to get in there and get hits. Like Can Can works on Dabu so well because it outputs just immense amounts of damage. It also has so much health it can tank hits from Dabu. It is just a very broken unit. This unit also benefits greatly from more investment. Getting its level cap higher is gonna make this unit just a complete god with its stats. That's why something like Cyberpunk is just so universal everywhere because you can just use it anywhere at just level 30 and you just have its full effect at level 30. Where Can Can, you might need to get some cat size, you might want to get some talents here and there to make Can Can the absolute broken unit that it becomes. It still is a fantastic unit at just level 30 with no talents, but it's not comparable to something like Cyberpunk at level 30, because at that point Cyberpunk will just provide so much more, while Can Can does benefit greatly the more you invest. And eventually, if you do get that GOAT Can Can level, where you have max talents, you got it to level 50, Can Can is a damn menace. Probably one of the best cats in the game, period. Now before we move on to the next tier, I also want to mention quickly that the order you get these in doesn't really matter too much. I recommend getting the ones that you need first, or need most. The rest is really up to you. But yeah, moving up next, we got Fishman, aka Swimmer Cat's true form. Now Fishman is unique because it covers a niche that being a very great anti-floating rusher or burst damage unit, but it could also just be used as a general rusher. Its stats are high enough to take hits while also dealing some high burst damage as well. It is single target, but that is the same thing with Can Can as well. The thing that's so unique about Fishman is that it has the rebound animation. It gets knocked back by anything, it comes back and it does its attack once again. And I call that a rebound. Fishman has high rebound potential, it's able to get knocked back and output even higher damage per life. So when you combine that with its quick movement speed as a rusher, also its low cost, its good recharge as well, and its high stats as well, it just becomes an ultimate rusher unit for general use and an anti-floating killer. Like Can Can as well, Fishman does benefit a lot from more investment too, whether that be getting its level cap higher or even the talents such as the nice movement speed talent. Next up for the super rare key gachas, we have none other than Pizza Cat, aka Weightlifter's true form. We've been talking a lot about the single target OP units, well here is a area attacker generalist that is a staple across many 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 stages. Yes, Pizza is a black killer and it will help across all of those XP stages and any black enemies that come your way. It is probably the best anti-black unit in the game, but don't let that distract you from the fact that Pizza is also just a great general AoE attacker. It has solid range, it has very great stats, especially its HP. It is able to take hits from big time enemies. Its recharge is pretty okay as well. I'd say it is fair for a unit with such high stats here, providing so much damage on the field as well. But it also becomes extremely powerful with the investments, especially those talents, such as that wave talent, it could also get some crowd control potential with that slow talent and it also has a nice cost down talent as well, as well as just the extra stat talents. Pizza is just an all around great unit, just a great general AoE attacker next to units like Cameraman, Paris, Drama Cat slash Slapsticks, Seafarer, etc. It is in that core of great general attackers. Next up we got Octopus Cat aka Sadako Cat's true form. This is a fairly niche unit because it only provides its value with its wave block abilities and some of its anti-floating abilities as well. But because of how important this unit is towards the mid game of the game and even in the beginner phase in some of those stages, this is definitely a key gacha unit. It has one knockback with great HP, nothing like insane but it has a good amount of HP, but on top of that it's also resistant to floating enemies. 
So against floating enemies, this unit will definitely be able to tank multiple hits and hold ground against those floating enemies and at the same time it does do a okay amount of damage. But the main thing is how it provides that wave block ability and it also has a solid recharge as well. It also has some crowd control ability with that weaken. Next up for the super rares in the key gotchas, we have Seafarer Cat, aka Surfer Cat's true form. Seafarer is in the same situation with Pizza Cat. It is a great general AoE attacker, but it also has a niche against that anti-alien being an anti-alien crowd control. But the thing about Seafarer is that it has great survivability, a trait something like Cameraman has. Now it's not as broken as Cameraman with its quick recharge and low cost. It has a decent cost, it has a decent recharge, it has a solid range as well. But the thing is, its stats. It has a very great amount of HP and his DPS could get high very quickly once you start to stack. And on top of that, it has that 100% chance to survive a lethal strike. So its survivability is even more through the roof. And it has four knockbacks, so it could reposition a lot as well. It is just everything you would want out of a general AoE attacker. Very great unit. And if you're having troubles with alien enemies, or Cats of the Cosmos, or Into the Future, Seafarer will completely carry you throughout it all. Speaking of great general AoE attackers, next up we got on the super rare key gotchas is Slapsticks aka Drama Cat's true form. Now this is in a bit similar case with Cyborg, that being that you don't need the true form for it to be effective. Drama Cat is already a great AoE generalist attacker. It has good stats, it has good DPS, it has great general use across a lot of stages and pretty much in any lineup. It is basically Cyborg but with a little bit more HP, a little bit less DPS, but in true form it gains the anti-relic abilities, that being strong against relic enemies, and that makes it a really great anti-relic unit, being able to take hits and also deal a great amount of damage as well. It's not as spammable or stackable as Cyborg, but it does have good range. It has a little bit higher health, so it could take those hits compared to Cyborg, and it also provides an anti-relic niche. Next up for the super rare key gotchas, yes there is a lot for the super rares, it is none other than Rokat, aka Sushi Cat's true form. Now this is a very interesting unit because it provides so much things at once. It's an anti-red beast of a tank, but at the same time it also has a quick movement speed, so it can be used as a type of rusher while tanking hits as well. It also has the ability to AoE crowd control red enemies with that weaken, further proving its abilities to be just a damn behemoth tank against red enemies. It is a wall to be messed with and a ultimate anti-red tank, so yes, in that case it is a very useful unit, but not only that, it could also be used as just a general high HP tanker and it could also do some solid rushing as well with its decent movement speed. And it does have some damage output as well, but it's nothing worth noting, it is just an extra bonus. Next up for the key gotchas in the super rares, we have Housewife, aka Vulture Cat's true form. Now this is a bit weird because before I wouldn't put this too high in the priority or as a key gotcha unit, but with its talents and with its full potential now, Housewife is really a good generalist attacker. What's unique about Housewife as a general AoE attacker is that it has that LD, so it provides great range with LD. It is also very quick as a AoE attacker. It has good stats, nothing too crazy or comparable to like Cyborg or Drama Cats or Castaway, but it has a very nice niche as well, that being the anti-zombie crowd control. It also becomes an anti-zombie killer with those talents with Savage Blow. But not only that, with talents here, with that Savage Blow talent, Housewife can seriously be a really, really good general AoE attacker. It might not have that crazy high HP, it might not have that crazy high DPS, its recharge might be a little bit too long, 
but it does do its role really well. And lastly, for the key gotchas in this super rare section, we have Kitty of Liberty, aka Fencer Cat's true form. Now, Kitty of Liberty is a very slept on unit, even Fencer Cat or Kendo Cat is a pretty slept on unit. It is essentially just another Dragon Cat, but it also has the ability to barrier break. And that's what people only focus on, but they ignore everything else that Kitty of Liberty has. It has great stats with its HP, it has pretty high DPS clocking in at almost 5000 DPS at level 30, and it also has only one knockback so it could go in there and it will almost always get a hit off, even if it does get outranged in some cases. It has that good recharge as well so it is decently spammable and stackable. Like I mentioned before, it's just like Dragon Cat in that case with its great single target DPS and stackability. And like I mentioned before, the thing that people focus on the most here is that barrier breaker ability as well. So yes, it does have that niche. Compared to a max level King Dragon, it does have way less HP at level 30, but it has way higher DPS at level 30 compared to a max level King Dragon. Now King Dragon does provide more range, but it also has a higher recharge as well compared to Kitty of Liberty. To put it in perspective, Can Can has around like 6000 DPS as a single target burst damage unit. Kitty of Liberty has almost 5000 DPS. So don't sleep on Kitty of Liberty, it could help out in a lot of stages. But that's pretty much it for the super rares key gotchas. The other units that I didn't mention here are units that you should get later down the line as a second priority or third priority compared to the units I mentioned as the key gotcha units, but they're also units that fulfill a certain niche that you might need at different points of the game. For example, stuff like iCat is a more second or third priority true form and gotcha unit, and stuff like Juliet Cat is a very great unit as just a anti-angel crowd control, but it is not something I would recommend as a key gacha unit because it is focused on later as a niche because Sanzo already covers that area as a key gacha unit against angels. But at the end of the day, remember, it really depends on your account and where you are at at the game. So do keep that in mind, but in most cases, I do recommend just getting the key gotchas first and just getting the rest of the gacha true forms later. But bam, there is all the super rare key gacha units that I recommend. Now, I was gonna go in depth about some of these situational gachas, but this video is already a bit too long. So tune in next time for the continuation of this huge guide where I'll be diving into the specifics of the situational gacha units, replacements for the key gacha units, as well as info on what stages to farm with cat fruits and what stages to farm XP, as well as which units will benefit greatly from more investment in the key gachas and situational gachas. But yeah, more big stuff coming real soon, so stay tuned. I will be back soon for another video. Drop a like if this guide helped you out, subscribe if you're new, join the hashtag Google Gang, go join the Discord, link is in the description down below. It's been John Boogle and I'll see you for another big video on this whole topic soon. See ya!